Welcome back, my friends. Episode... Where are we? 57? Wow. Time flies. But I'm so deeply grateful you're here and you're listening to this podcast. And my goal is to make this podcast better and better with every episode that I record. So please don't hesitate to reach out with feedback. In yesterday's episode, I talked about how tomorrow will be different through the actions that you take. And today, I want to share with you one of the easiest way to bridge the gap from inaction to action. Maybe you've been hurt emotionally and are still suffering from the pain, unable to move on with your life. Maybe you're ill, filled with physical pain that keeps you stuck at home. Maybe you are lost, unclear in which direction to go with your life, facing many options, being pulled this way or that. Or maybe just facing one decision and unsure how to proceed. I'm sure all of us have been in this situation. I know I have. And maybe maybe you want to just change from being sedentary and unmotivated to a healthier lifestyle that includes daily movement. Maybe you want to meditate but you cannot seem to become still. Or you decided meditation is not for you after all and you're looking for something else. Something else that will give you this inner peace and quiet. When my thoughts are running haywire, my emotions are in disarray, when I feel sluggish, tired, and unable to commit myself to strenuous exercise, the cure for all these is a simple walk. Walks can bridge many gaps. When you simply need a break from your thoughts, from others, from life in general, walks are amazing and they're never given the credit that they deserve. They don't really count as exercise, even though this has slowly changed with the increased popularity of counting daily steps. Walks can appear boring, without real purpose or def- or a definite goal. They take time, time that we rather spend on other more productive things. And sometimes, when we're feeling down, pulling off a walk seems like the hardest thing imaginable. But walking is an amazing activity that I want to recommend to you today. Dog owners probably agree with me. They have no choice. They, whether they feel like walking or not, they have to get out. Before I discovered meditation, I could, I would call my walks my meditation. And they can be a form of meditation. A simple walk is a movement, an activity, a change. It can be the participation we talked about yesterday your participation in life, when nothing else seems manageable. A walk can be a bridge from being distracted to returning to presence, from being in pain to feeling some relief, from feeling distant, lonely, overwhelmed, to becoming more mindful. And if you wonder how all this is possible, here are a few tips. First of all, a walk is the easiest form of movement. As long as your legs are functional, you don't need much else. A walk can be from your bed to the window, around your house, to the park and back, or along the beach until you're tired. You can decide how long you want to make the walk. It is a low-impact exercise, and no matter how fast you walk. Walking requires energy, so your body burns fuel. A walk can be your start to a physically active lifestyle. From not moving at all, or maybe from moving too much and being tired and possibly even hurt. It's the bridge between either extreme. Walking stimulates not only the muscles in your body, but it also tickles your brain. By moving, your eyes see new objects, which can help you get out of emotional or mental ruts. Change of scenery has positive effects on the brain. If you feel down and depressed, A walk can lift your mood and your spirits. When you feel stuck, your inspiration is at an all-time low. A walk can get your creativity back. I have some of the best insights when I walk. In fact, I end up pulling my phone out, despite the fact that I don't want to use it. But I always have ideas that come to me and I need to write them down. And research has supported this. Walkers thought more creatively than the people that sit. So there's the bridge again, from mental or emotional problems to solutions. So here's my advice for your walk. And again, 
no matter how long you walk. I think the most important goal is to be present when you walk. Use it as an opportunity to get away from the thoughts and worries that plague you. Don't use the walk to get on a phone call with your partner to discuss the issues that you have. Use the walk as an opportunity to disconnect with everything that that tries to get at you from the outside and connect with your inner world. So here are four things that I do when I walk and they really help me with being mindful and present. One, be conscious of your breath. Do a few slow inhales and long exhales. It helps relax you and it centers you. I especially like the fresh morning air. Everything smells pure and untouched. And you don't have to do this the entire walk, just at the beginning. Just really, as you start, set yourself up with a few nice breaths. Two, find beauty around you. It's everywhere. This is the great thing about walks. You're not in a gym. You're not looking at the same old wall in front of you. You have the outside world. Something new, something to explore and discover. Flowers, birds, trees, a cat in a window, a beautiful home. Or I also see beauty in the old, decayed and dirty. That may be just me, but I do have an appreciation for it. And here in Oakland and probably every city, there is a lot of that. But that doesn't mean beauty cannot be found. I always look at a graffiti. It is someone's way to express themselves. I look at buildings that fall apart, imagining what once was and what will be there in the future. The dirt, the messy sidewalks, the homeless people laying around. It is my world that I live in and it doesn't make it less beautiful. But you pick an area that inspires you. Pick a time of day that is your favorite. I try to get away from noisy streets, parks, the beach, quiet neighborhoods or the woods. I love early morning walks when the world is quiet, when the earth is still in the process of waking up, the sun is making its way through the fog, people opening their stores and brewing their first batch of coffee, maybe even a hint of bacon aroma in the air as I walk through neighborhoods. Take your pick, but find beauty in it. Find beauty in the things that you see and see them consciously. Pay attention to them. Three. Use your walk to practice gratitude. We had an episode on gratitude. As you acknowledge the beauty around you, be grateful. Practice your gratitude for living in such a beautiful part of the world. I do this every time I walk. I consider myself really lucky to live in California. I think it's one of the most beautiful places in this world. And you should think the same about your place, because it is. So many people would give anything to be able to live where you and I live. As you see, smell and touch the world around you on your walk, give thanks to everything, even to the simple fact that you can walk. So many people cannot. And four, enjoy what is. Don't drown the world with your headphones and loud music. Open yourself up to what you come across. Be receptive and patient. There may be surprises. Maybe it's colder than you thought, or a street you wanted to walk along is blocked for a race. Be open and welcome it. Walk faster to get warmer, or take another route. Smile at another walker. Greet the dog along the way. Welcome whatever takes place on your walk. That is being present. That is moving and participating in life. When things are dark around you, take a walk and you will see light again. I encourage you today, take that step, no matter how hard it is. Open yourself up to it and try it out. Don't set expectations, how long, how fast, who will see me. Just go. Remember, baby steps every day. So, enjoy your walk. Put it maybe on your lists. We talked about lists. I try to get a couple of walks in a week. It's hard for me with my schedule and everything I have going on, but a walk is important to me. And it's kind of a reset. It's a refresh for me. And I wish that you can find the same value in walking. Much love. Until next time.